Well, I'm Judy Warren, and I'm 75. I was born in 1941, two months before the Second World War began. Good evening, and welcome to FabFit TV. I'm your host, Kim Barnes Jefferson, and I help women who are over 40 feel fit, conf confident, and comfortable in their bodies so they can live a life of infinite possibilities without worrying about diet and exercise. So tonight is um, all about fitness mistakes. And think about it. We've all made them. Some of us continue to make them and then like bang ourselves in the head because we're like, why can't I stop, you know, getting back into this like, you know, hamster wheel of just knowing that it's not serving me. And so what I wanted to do is not only point out what the mistakes are, but also say, what can I do to correct them? And just like, Anytime I give these kind of um, tip shows, it's not about write them all down and start doing them tomorrow. What I want you to do is take it all in, maybe listen to this a couple times, and then say, you know what, I could do number five, or I could do number ten, and whatever seems the easiest for you, because let's face it, when things get challenging, that's when we shut down. When things get uncomfortable, that's more like, oh, I'm not supposed to be doing this. So start with easy. And that's the first, that's the first actual tip is the one of the biggest things I see with a lot of people is they set these big, huge goals. And I want you to have big, huge goals. I want them, but I want you to think about, I always screw up this saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. So bear with me. Um, you can only bite an elephant one bite at a time. So set a goal that's the size of an elephant and then start by focusing on the trunk, then focusing on the ear, then focusing on the right foot, then focusing on the left foot. Because when you try to focus on that entire elephant, that's like, I don't know, an elephant's like two tons. Like that's like two tons of like responsibility coming right at you when you can't can't really manage that much where that feels overwhelming. You know, now I'm just like picturing an elephant sitting on me and that's just not comfortable. <laughs> I think I might die, but that's just not comfortable, right? You're just like, it's just a like crushing weight of what your goal is. And I get it. I have, I have huge goals. And when I look at that big, huge, hairy goal staring at me, it makes me want to just like pull the covers over my head. But when I kind of, when I take a take a big step back, that's when I can kind of, I can get excited. That's when I can say, okay, I can start to see a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. And in our in our society, it's all about go big, go home, you know, hustle hard and bah, sweet Georgia Brown. Let's take that out. Let's take that full equation out of it. And let's really start to say, how do I take my elephant and I break it into various pieces? So, you know, um, I have a friend that's running the marathon, the Boston Marathon, which is in two weeks, three weeks. So, you know, she's, her training starting to dwindle down and she's starting to, um, you know, really just like focus in on it. Now, most people, when you train for Boston, you start training roughly right after Thanksgiving. So if... I woke up on Thanksgiving morning and I said, hey, I want to run the Boston Marathon. I wouldn't exactly wake up and start running 26.2 miles. I would start by running maybe a mile, maybe two miles. And maybe my goal is to eventually get to a marathon, but feel it out. Say, okay, when I get to 10 miles and I can do that comfortably, confidently, that's when I'll be like, okay, where can I put a marathon in the horizon? It might not be Boston because Boston is always in April, but guess what? There are other marathons so that if I make it to the marathon, then I can say, you know what? I've made, a, I've made it to a marathon. Now my next site is Boston. Does that make sense? Where I had this big, huge goal, which is Boston. I've never run. So then I'm like, all right, let's scale that back. Let's make it so that I'm going to run 
get to a point where I can run 10 miles comfortably. And when I'm able to run 10 miles comfortably, then I'm gonna consider a marathon. Once I hit that marathon, then I'm gonna consider Boston, right? Because I understand how to train. And then I know, you know, what my body's capable of. And that way, like my big hairy goal, I've been able to break it down and be able to start to see light at the end of the tunnel and confident, right? You know, once I get like that 10 miles under me, that's one milestone that I'm like, yes. And then I can move to the next milestone, the next milestone, the next milestone without having to always think, oh, I didn't make it in Boston. Oh, I suck. I'm this, I'm that, I'm not worthy. I'm not enough, blah, 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 blah. Whatever your inner, insert your, the salty talk, says that's the you don't want to listen to that i want you to start feeling the inner confidence of yourself because trust me we've all gone like 30 rounds with ourselves in our head sometimes out loud sometimes sometimes silently um and then after that it's really comes down to your why and the order i'm giving you this there's no particular order it was just basically as i sat down and um uh, brainstorm this episode it was just things that came to my mind so your why you know I've talked about your why I feel like you're like enough about your why that's how much I feel like I've talked about your why so the big thing about the why is that's what gets you out of bed so many people are like I have no motivation no you don't have a why and your why has to be strong enough that it over can override temptation. So what does that mean? Say you are going out out for a drink and you with that friend that a drink turns into two that turns into beer that turns into nachos and then it turns into a morning of regret. What if you're with that friend and your why so compelling compelling? you're going on vacation and you just see yourself in that amazing bathing suit without having to strategically cover up in order to go anywhere other than to lay on the chaise lounge you see yourself running that marathon you see yourself you know just feeling comfortable and fit and you know that three glasses of wine ain't going to do it for you so you're able to see your why in your mind and know that a confident, fit, healthy person doesn't drink three glasses of wine on the regular basis. So when the waiter says, do you want another? And you've been there, you know what it's like when you're in a group of people and all it takes is one person to say yes. And it's like a freaking set of dominoes. Everyone else falls down. Well, if Susie has one, I'll have one. So and so and so. So I want you to be that person who says, you know what? Hey, you know, I got to get up tomorrow morning and get in my run. Or, hey, I'm going on vacation in two weeks and I really want to make sure that I'm looking my best. That is, that's your why. Your why is coming out and it's being the angel on your shoulder saying, Hey girl, this is what we're doing and get on board. So really think about what it is that, that you want. You know, is it a competition? So is it, you know, running? Is it, um, you know, in my, back in my day, it was, um, you know, doing my bikini shows. Um, is it recognition that you want is, that, that is a motivation for you? Is it appreciation? Is it accountability? Um, there is a book, um, The Five Love Languages, and it's like, it basically says what of the, of there's, Five in the book, the five love languages. It's um, tokens of appreciation, um, gratitude, touch. Ugh. I'll have to look that up and I'll put it in the show notes. Um, but basically, uh, he breaks down what the five ways that you can show your partner, your spouse, how you feel about them. And so one of my uh, love languages is um recognition and so you know it goes a long way for me when my husband says uh says thank you or um also acts of service so it goes a long way when he unloads the dishwasher it goes a long way when he folds the laundry i'm like oh my god 
stop me now. So I want you to think about what is what is it that like you know lights you up? Is it like when someone does something nice for you? If it someone who recognizes you, what is it that lights you up that motivates you to keep going and going and going? And you know, think back of when you were most successful. What was the motivation for you? You know, um, I talk a lot about um, the carrot and the stick, right? If you think about if you were a um, uh, a, a racehorse, racehorses, you know, the jockey can you know whip you to get you to run faster, or the jockey could put you know a carrot in front of you as a way to motivate you to go back and forth. And um, I remember when I was first um, uh, learning about you know motivation and intrinsic motivation and all of this when I was um, getting my coaching cer certification, one of my um, one of the professors, uh, she talked about, um, you know, some people need the stick m more than they need the carrot. And she was talking about one of her clients who um, she uh, wanted to start working out in the morning. And so she said, okay, you know, what's going to be your motivation? And she said, well, if I don't go to the gym, you know, three mornings a week, I'm going to have to sleep on the floor. And, you know, if you have this nice comfy bed sleeping on the floor, is it going to be um, really enticing because you're uncomfortable and then you'll want to do it. So then she found out that she wasn't getting a good enough night's sleep. So she said, you know what? I joined a gym and what I've done is if um, I don't go to the gym, I'm just going to put $20 and just leave it on the street because that's basically what I've done. So she, you know, took her, however much her membership was and she said out of 30 days it's 20 bucks a day so if I told myself I was going to the gym three days a week if I don't go to the gym three days a week I'm gonna put $20 on the street because I've basically thrown $20 out the window so what is it that's your motivation you know are you that person who's gonna sleep on the floor are you that person who's gonna put just random $20 around town what is going to keep you motivated and the other piece is accountability. I know for me, I need accountability because left to our own devices, we will let ourselves off the hook. We will, you know, get to like the 75th yard line and we're like, ah, what's the other 25 yards? Ah, I'll get to it. Or, ah, oh, those 25 yards, it's pretty freaking hard. But if no one knows that, oh, excuse me. If no one knows I'm trying to get that extra 25 yards, what's it to me? Why, why try? Why, why would I try? Why wouldn't I just keep going? Why wouldn't I just say, hey, I made it 75% of the way. What's the other 25? But when I tell someone this is what I'm going to do, I don't want to be that person who's like, well, what happened was, and the cat ate my homework, and then my pipes burst in my house, and then excuse, 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 excuse. I need that. I need that um, check-in. And, you know, accountability is directly tied to your motivation. You know, so a lot of my clients, you know, they'll fall into two buckets. You know, you when you work with me, you have the ability to you know, work one-on-one -on -one and check in with me. And some people won't check in because they're afraid that their check-in isn't perfect, right? Well, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking to be the accountability partner. I'm looking for you to say, this was my goal, and I'm looking for you to tell me what you did. And for me, the feedback is, okay, if you told me your goal was to run a marathon and you didn't run, the question is gonna be like, is that still your goal? The question is going to be like, what got in your way? And let's brainstorm ways for you to be able to get in your run or really understand if running is, is the actual goal that you want or is it something that you think you should be doing? Because I see a lot of that. Like I should be doing, insert the, the blank. So I really want you to think about what's going to hold you accountable. Is it a coach? Is it a friend? Is it journaling? Is it literally writing down everything you put in your mouth, every movement that you make? What is it going to hold you accountable? Because it's the accountability that flashes the mirror up in, in your face. When things aren't working, you could go, you know, kind of like, um, 
instant replay, you know, when there is a call on the field and, you know, one ref says this, the coach says that, all the players are pointing to the ball in the other direction. You know, they pull out the tape and they say, okay, let's rerun the tape and let's see. Was his feet in or out? You know, did he catch the ball or didn't he catch the ball? That's what accountability is. It's, it's rerunning the tape so that when you're like, how come I'm not getting any results? Let's rerun the tape and be like, oh, right there, right there. That, you know, that's where it was. You know, I, I thought I wasn't eating as much, but now that I see everything I put in my mouth, hmm, a handful here, a handful there, it's, it's starting to add up. The other thing that, you know, so many of us fall into this trap, I'm, I'm raising my hand in straight up guilt, guilty of this for a really long time. Um, more is better. And I have a lot of clients that are still in this, this bucket and we're working through it. But again, it goes back to what, how this conversation started, hustle, grind, push, you know, yeah, uh, pain is, uh, no pain, no gain. Like. Oh, I bought into that mentality for a really long time and I was all banged up because of that. You know, literally I worked out seven days a week, like hard, like hard. There was no such thing as a rest day. Now I'm like, oh, rest. I like it. It's good. So what, it, what rest is your sweet spot, right? This uh, it takes your body 24 to 48 hours to repair. So I want you to think about if my body is my cell phone, right? Here's my cell phone. I'm at, I've had this phone on, darn it, I charged it on the way here. But I'm going to, I'm going to think about yesterday. So it's uh, roughly 10 of 7 right now. Yesterday at 10 of 7, I had my phone on from 5.30 in the morning till now, my phone was at 40%, okay, 40%. Now here it is 24 hours later. How long do you think that 40% would have lasted me? I don't think I would have gotten till noon. That is how your body is. We would never think to not plug this in. I mean, think about it. there's There's a whole industry that makes money on, um, there's a whole industry that makes money with the idea of backup, backup battery power, you know, and so many people are like, I can't let that phone die. Well, that's the same thing with your body. You know, so many people rely on those backup battery powers. I want you to think about how do I just unplug, unwind? You know, uh, I had a friend, um, this was probably, probably about a week ago. She posted on Facebook how she just went to you know, she just did like a, a loan trip just to like de-stress, de unwind, unplug. And she went away for four days and she's like, during those four days, she's like, I watched everything on Netflix. And I, I think she's like, I showered twice. And so many people are like, girl, invite me, bring me along. That's what I want. Like, it was just, uh, we need to find some times in our life to take that big, deep, insert the dirty word breath and that's where we're going to get results the pushing the grinding the hustling the under eating the overeating all the all the things this whole big roller coaster that we keep going through is all it is is setting us up for failure it's setting us up to say how come i'm not getting my results how come why come i'm doing all the things i'm doing all the things yes you are doing all the right things. You're eating great foods. You're, you're hitting the gym. But are you doing too much? Are you doing too much thinking that more is going to get you there faster? More is going to be better. And I'm going to tell you that's a big fat no. Um, Rongo Badongo. That is, not, that is not going to be. The key here is finding that sweet spot. And so for a lot of my clients, I say the sweet spot for, for them is anywhere from three to five days a week. And in those three to five days a week, it's not doing a yoga class, a spin class, and then throwing in strength training. It's, you know, I, I'll give you strength 
and cardio in one day, but not a yoga class or, oh, I got to take a martial arts class and then I'm going to go out and run around here. Blah, too much. I want you to really think about how do I maximize my time? Can I uh, kick my own booty in an hour or less and get efficient at it? You know, that's why, you know, these high high intensity interval training, you know, classes have been popping up all over the country because they work, right? You know, no longer do we need to be slogging it out on a piece of cardio equipment for an hour. No longer do we need to be, you know, walking around, you know, doing all these crazy body part splits or doing, you know, circus uh, routines in order to get fit. You know, so really think about, you know, full body explosive moves is really where, you know, the bulk of my clientele is going to get the best results. Um, and the second piece of that, of that is movement. And uh, a few episodes back, I talked about the four alternatives to dieting. Um, and I also have a, um, a PDF guide if you want to grab that off of my website. Um, and in the four alternatives to dieting, the focus is on movement. And movement being what it says, moving your body walking, you know, getting in those 10,000 steps, you know, getting up and going to the bathroom the furthest from your desk, you know, taking the stairs versus taking the escalator. So those kind of things. And that's what I really want you to start to think about and focus on. Um, the second, the, um, the second to last piece is knowing your fitness personality. Who are you? And I have a quiz, um, that I've put together because over the, you know, last 15 years of working with, you know, thousands of women, they all fall, I see, I see people fall into four different categories and, you know, it's the mojo mom, right? You know, you're the mom who was like, I was a rock star. I had kids. Now I'm like, what the heck happened to me? Then, you know, you're the perfect Pam, you know, everything has to be perfect. Everything has to be lined up. And if one thing gets out of whack, I, I'm off to I have to get to start all over again because it's it's not perfect. Then I have my comfort Connie. You know, all it takes is you know, uh, stress at work, stress at home, and you're on the couch with wine and a canister of hummus and no cares in the world. Or you're you know, you're flip flop Frankie where you've got everything nailed down, but you're still trying to do it all. And trying to, you know, juggle more, you know, juggle, juggle it in order to see if you can, you know, squeeze out that much more in your day. You're trying to work on that, finding that, finding that, um, that balance. And then the last piece is not asking for help or support. And I'm, I'm raising my hand. I'm guilty of it because you don't, it, you don't want to seem weak. You don't want to seem like, oh, I can't do this on my own. You don't want to feel like you don't know. And one of the ways is, is that when you ask for support, it shows that you're not alone, that sometimes you don't have all the answers. Sometimes someone has gone th through the path before you and can point out the way a little faster for you. They can point out, um, you know, I, I, I like to think of this as, um, you know how you, those mazes, um, they're like hedge mazes and like, you know, you can go in there and you can be like trapped in there for hours. That's where I, that's where accountability and support is. It's the person who's been through the maze before and it can tell you, you know what, you want to make two lefts and two rights in order to get, to get through the maze faster. Or I could just be bumping into different roadblocks and, you know, finding different dead ends where if I work, work with someone, they might, they can help me figure out if it's left versus right. And it doesn't make me weak. It doesn't make me not smart. It makes me actually smarter because I'm like, you know what? She has what I want. So I'm going to ask her what she's done. And I know some of you are like, oh, I can't afford, but I want you to calculate how much money you've spent on quick fixes. And how many of those quick fixes actually worked? How many of those quick fixes had lasting results? And if you can tell me all of my quick fixes, they were like freaking rock stars. 
But if they weren't, listen on, you know, keep listening. So from time to time, we need professional advice. And it's not, you know, you need professional advice for five years. You don't need professional advice for six years. I'm saying you might need professional advice for three months, six months, something so that you kind of give you guide guideposts. And then you're like, I can fly free. Like my goal is for my clients to outgrow me. That I give you the support, I provide you with the framework you need so that you always have a repeatable process. Because what I see over and over again is you get these quick fixes and then you go to another quick fix and you go to another quick fix and there's no process. It's just all these haphazard things that you've cobbled together. And then you're like, it's me. No, it's the process that you've been following. It's not you. And when you get a great process, you'll get great results. That's what I know. So, um, the big thing is when you take all of these uh, mistakes, you've applied the corrections that I've given you, you keep going. And the more you keep going, the more you'll be able to increase your confidence, gain more energy, have better sex, have better sleep, and and ultimately lose some weight and feel healthier and strong. So that's all I got for you this evening. Um, in the show notes, I will put in all of the links that I talked about